Here we go, delving into the first chapter of our tale, where I find myself at the heart of the narrative, a young soul navigating the tumultuous waters of adolescence. I was not always the person I am today. There was a time when my actions and words betrayed a lack of respect and understanding, especially towards my female classmates. This behavior, a shield against my own insecurities, eventually caught the vigilant eyes of the school's administration. The day the vice principal called me into her office is etched in my memory, a moment frozen in time. The air was thick with anticipation and a hint of foreboding as I sat across from her, the weight of my actions hanging heavily in the room. She spoke with a firmness that belied a deep concern, not just for the school's morale, but for my own path in life. Her words were a mirror, reflecting a version of myself I had ignored for far too long. The punishment she proposed was as unexpected as it was unconventional. For one week, I was to attend school not as the boy I had always been, but in the attire of the girls I had so thoughtlessly disrespected. The announcement sent a shockwave through my being, a mix of disbelief and embarrassment that threatened to engulf me. Yet, beneath the tumult of emotions, a flicker of curiosity ignited, an unspoken question about the lessons this journey might unveil. The following day marked the beginning of an odyssey I could never have anticipated. Dressed in a blouse and skirt, with two small pigtails framing my face, I stepped into a world that was both familiar and utterly alien. The eyes of my peers upon me felt like a thousand suns, their gazes piercing through the armor I had built around myself. The girls, once the target of my thoughtless jibes, now became my guides in this unfamiliar terrain. They adorned me with lipstick, a gesture that carried a weight far beyond the simple act of application, symbolizing a bridge being built across the chasm I had created with my actions. This week, meant to be a sentence, slowly morphed into a journey of self-reflection. Each day, as I navigated the halls and classrooms in my new guise, the barriers I had erected began to crumble, revealing not just the vulnerability I had hidden from the world, but also the strength that lay in understanding and empathy. The laughter and whispers that followed me served as a constant reminder of the person I had been and the person I was beginning to discover within myself. This transformation was not without its challenges. The mean girls saw in my punishment an opportunity to extend their own brand of justice, weaving tales that painted me in a light far removed from reality. Their words, intended to wound, instead added layers to my evolving perspective, teaching me the harsh truth about the consequences of our actions and the power of redemption. As the week drew to a close, I stood at a crossroads, gazing back at the path I had traveled and forward at the journey yet to come. This experience, meant to be a mere punishment, had unfolded as a chapter of unexpected growth, challenging me to confront the shadows within and step into the light of understanding and acceptance. Little did I know, this was just the beginning of a saga that would challenge every belief I held about myself and the world around me. As I embarked on this unforeseen journey, donned in a blouse and skirt, with my hair fashioned into pigtails, the initial embarrassment that cloaked my spirit began to morph into a tapestry of far more complex emotions. The corridors of the school, once a battlefield where I wielded words and actions with reckless abandon, transformed into an arena of introspection and revelation. With each step taken in those unfamiliar shoes, a shift occurred within me. The snickers and pointed fingers that greeted me served as a constant barrage, a reminder of the divide I had once fostered. Yet, amidst the ridicule, a subtle transformation unfolded. The fabric of the skirt, the lightness of the blouse, and the unfamiliar feeling of hair brushing against my neck became symbols of a punishment that was quietly sculpting the essence of who I was becoming. The days stretched into weeks, and what was intended to be a brief lesson in empathy extended into an entire school year. The catalyst for this extension was a series of false accusations levied against me by peers. These mean-spirited fabrications, intended to further isolate and humiliate, 
instead unwittingly anchored me deeper into the life I was beginning to navigate. With each false word spoken against me, the reflection I saw in the mirror became less of the person I had been and more of the individual I was meant to discover. This prolonged period of living as a girl was not without its moments of profound isolation and introspection. There were evenings I spent in the quietude of my room, wrestling with a turmoil that ebbed and flowed like a relentless tide. The ridicule from my classmates, coupled with the whispers of judgment that seemed to echo through every corner of my existence, often threatened to engulf the flickers of understanding and acceptance I was beginning to nurture within myself. Yet, within this crucible of experience, I found unexpected allies. The girls, who had initially applied lipstick with hands guided by mockery, slowly became confidants. Their gestures of inclusion, once patronizing, transformed into acts of genuine support and camaraderie. Through their eyes, I began to witness the world from a perspective I had arrogantly dismissed. The lipstick, once a mark of my punishment, became a symbol of my burgeoning identity, a token of the journey I was undertaking. This relentless cycle of ridicule and reflection, accusation and adaptation forced me into a chrysalis of self-discovery. With each passing day, the disdain and laughter directed at me became less of a sentence to endure and more of a lesson to embrace. I learned about the strength it takes to stand in your truth, even when that truth is handed to you as a sentence. I discovered the resilience required to face adversity not with defiance but with an open heart. This transformation was not instantaneous, nor was it devoid of moments of despair. Yet, as the school year drew to a close, I found that the greatest punishment was not the ridicule or the isolation, but the possibility of returning to the person I had been before this journey began. In the crucible of my punishment, amidst the trials and tribulations, a new understanding of myself was forged, one that recognized the beauty and empathy, the strength and vulnerability, and the uncharted paths that lie beyond the confines of convention. As the school year unfolded, what began as a sentence to be served gradually morphed into a journey of profound self-discovery. The initial resistance and discomfort that cloaked my being began to dissipate, like the morning fog giving way to the warmth of the sun. This transformation was neither swift nor devoid of turmoil. Rather, it unfolded through a myriad of small revelations and moments of unexpected joy. The clothes I had once donned as a symbol of punishment slowly became garments of choice. The skirts, which had initially felt like chains binding me to humiliation, revealed themselves as vessels of freedom, their fabric dancing around my legs with a liberating grace I had never known. The blouse, once a reminder of my misdeeds, became a canvas upon which I could express a part of myself long suppressed under the guise of societal expectations. Even the act of applying makeup, initially an ordeal, transformed into a meditative ritual, each stroke of the brush on my skin a step closer to the person I was uncovering within. This acceptance of my new appearance was merely the surface of a much deeper transformation. It was as if, with each day spent walking in this new identity, I was peeling back layers of myself that I had never dared to explore. The ridicule, which had once seemed insurmountable, began to lose its sting, replaced by a burgeoning sense of pride in the person I was becoming. This new identity, crafted from the crucible of my punishment, became a shield and a beacon, guiding me through the tempest of adolescence towards the shores of self-acceptance. But this transformation extended beyond the physical trappings of clothes and makeup. It permeated the very essence of my being, reshaping my interactions with the world around me. I found myself cultivating empathy, a trait that had been conspicuously absent in my previous dealings, especially with those I had once disrespected. This newfound empathy allowed me to forge genuine connections with my classmates, both male and female, connections grounded in mutual respect and understanding. In embracing this new identity, I also faced the inevitable confrontation with societal norms and expectations. This journey, which began as a personal voyage, soon took on a larger significance, challenging not only my perceptions, but also those of the people around me. My transformation became a mirror, reflecting the rigid boundaries society often imposes on identity and expression, prompting those around me to question and, in some instances, reevaluate their own beliefs. 
the acceptance I found was not universal. There were those who sought to diminish or ridicule the authenticity of my journey. Yet, with each challenge, my resolve only strengthened, fortified by the knowledge that the person I was becoming was truer to my essence than any facade I had previously maintained. This period of my life, marked by transformation and acceptance, taught me invaluable lessons about the fluidity of identity, the power of self-expression, and the profound strength that lies in embracing one's truth. It was a testament to the fact that, often, the most challenging journeys are the ones that lead us to discover not just who we are, but who we have the potential to become. The transition from high school to college is a rite of passage, a bridge between the chapters of youth and the dawn of adulthood. As I crossed this threshold, stepping into the vibrant tapestry of arts college life, I carried with me the lessons and transformations of the past year. The canvas of my identity had been painted with broad strokes of self-discovery, colored by the shades of acceptance and resilience. Yet, unbeknownst to me, a pivotal challenge lay on the horizon, one that would test the very foundations of my newfound self. It was during the initial days of college, a time of exploration and introduction, that I encountered an unexpected ordeal. Amongst the flurry of new faces and the whirlwind of orientations, a group of seniors, guided by the traditional rites of passage, mistook my identity. Seizing upon this confusion, they crafted a challenge, a test of masculinity, a throwback to societal norms I had long since questioned and reshaped. The task was simple in its execution, but profound in its implications, a feat of skill, with my gender identity seemingly hanging in the balance. Faced with this challenge, I stood at a crossroads, the weight of decision pressing upon my shoulders. To succeed would be to affirm their expectations, to fit once more into the mold I had broken away from. To fail, however, was to embrace the path I had forged, to affirm the identity I had embraced with both hands. The choice, viewed through the lens of the past, might have seemed daunting. Yet, in that moment, clarity washed over me like a wave breaking upon the shore. With a calmness that surprised even myself, I stepped forward to meet the challenge. My actions, deliberate and unhurried, were not those of someone striving for victory. Instead, each motion, each moment of contact, was a testament to my journey, a declaration of my acceptance of who I had become. The ball missed its mark, not by chance, but by choice, a choice that echoed in the silent spaces between heartbeats, resounding with the truth of my identity. This decision, made in the span of a heartbeat yet rooted in a year of transformation, was a pivotal moment. It was an affirmation, not just to those who watched, but to myself of the journey I had undertaken. No longer was I adrift in the sea of societal expectations, buffeted by the winds of conformity. I had found my anchor in the depths of self-acceptance, in the embrace of an identity that transcended the binary constraints of gender, the repercussions of this decision rippled through my college life, a stone cast into the still waters of my world. Some viewed my choice with confusion, others with admiration, but all were forced to reckon with the authenticity of my existence. This challenge, and my response to it, became a declaration of my identity, an identity not defined by the expectations of others, but by the truth of my own experience. In the aftermath of this decision, I found not isolation, but a community of souls drawn to the authenticity of my journey. Together, we navigated the complexities of identity and expression, forging bonds strengthened by the fires of understanding and acceptance. This moment, a singular point in the tapestry of my life, was a testament to the power of choice, the courage to live authentically, and the unbreakable strength of an identity embraced with conviction and love, in the heart of my college years, amidst the whirlwind of self-discovery and acceptance, an unexpected turn of my journey unfolded under the quiet veil of an ordinary day turned extraordinary. It was during a solitary evening walk through the college's ancient whispering gardens, a place where time seemed to slow, allowing for reflection and solace, that the fabric of my reality gently unraveled to reveal the threads of magic woven within. As twilight danced upon the edges of the day, merging the light with shadows, 
I found myself standing before an old gnarled tree, its limbs stretching towards the heavens as if in silent supplication. It was here, in this moment suspended between day and night, that I encountered a presence so profound, so imbued with the essence of empathy and understanding, that the air itself seemed to thrum with unseen energy. The entity, if it could be called that, was not bound by the physical forms to which we are accustomed. It was both everywhere and nowhere, a whisper on the wind, a warmth in the heart, an understanding in the soul. It spoke not with words but with emotions, a language universal and yet so intimately personal. I understood then that this was a being of pure empathy, a guardian of the unseen bridges that connect us all. Moved by the sincerity of my journey and the choices I had made, the entity bestowed upon me a gift, a blessing as ancient as it was profound. This gift was the ability to perceive and empathize with the true feelings of others, to see beyond the masks we wear, to the core of our shared humanity. With this gift came a responsibility, a calling to use this newfound empathy to heal, to understand, and to connect in ways I had never imagined possible. This magical intervention transformed my journey from one of personal discovery to a broader mission of fostering understanding and compassion. My interactions with those around me became deepened, enriched by this ability to perceive the silent songs of their hearts. Conversations transformed into exchanges of raw, unguarded truths, and relationships that had once skimmed the surface of acquaintance blossomed into profound connections. With this gift of empathy, I found myself in a unique position to mediate misunderstandings, to bridge gaps forged by fear and prejudice, and to offer solace in moments of unspoken pain. My presence became a haven, a space where individuals felt seen and understood, often for the first time in their lives. This ability did not come without its challenges, for to fully embrace the emotions of others is to walk a path of vulnerability and strength in equal measure. Yet, with each step, I grew more adept, more attuned to the delicate balance of giving and receiving, of supporting and being supported. This magical twist, this gift bestowed upon me in a moment caught between the fading light and the encroaching shadow, became a cornerstone of my existence. It allowed me to live not just as a person who had found peace in their identity, but as a beacon for others guiding them through the darkness of their doubts towards the light of acceptance and understanding. In embracing this gift, I embraced a truth that had always whispered in the depths of my being, that at the core of our identities, beyond the labels and the expectations, lies the unassailable truth of our shared humanity, a truth that connects us all with threads of empathy and love. As the narrative of my life unfurled, each chapter etching deeper into the essence of my being, I found myself standing on the threshold of a new test, a challenge that would extend beyond the confines of self-discovery and into the realm of familial bonds and societal perceptions. Tasked with overseeing my sister's household in her absence, I was to navigate a domain steeped in traditional roles and expectations, a setting far removed from the supportive environments I had come to cherish. The house, a familiar yet distant setting, was a microcosm of conventional dynamics a place where the roles of gender were etched into the very foundation. My sister, aware of the journey I had embarked upon, entrusted me with this responsibility, not just as a task to be undertaken, but as a testament to the strength and authenticity she saw in me. Yet, as I crossed the threshold, I could not help but feel the weight of expectation pressing down upon me, the gaze of societal norms scrutinizing my every move. Managing the household, a task seemingly mundane, became a canvas upon which the nuances of my identity were painted in vivid strokes. Each interaction, from the simple act of preparing meals to the complex dynamics of family gatherings, was imbued with the underlying question of my authenticity. The roles traditionally assigned to gender loomed large, casting shadows of doubt and uncertainty over my actions. Yet, it was within this crucible that the essence of my transformation was tested and affirmed. The gift of empathy bestowed upon me by a force beyond the ordinary became my compass in this uncharted territory. It allowed me to perceive the unspoken emotions and thoughts of those around me, to navigate the complexities of interaction with a sensitivity and understanding that transcended words. 
this magical intervention, far from being a mere tool, became a bridge connecting me to the hearts of others, revealing the common thread of humanity that binds us all. My tenure in my sister's home, meant to be a test of my ability to conform to traditional roles, instead became a testament to the fluidity of identity and the boundless capacity of the human heart to embrace and accept. The challenges I faced, from the skepticism of relatives to the curious gaze of neighbors, were met not with defiance, but with a gentle assurance, a quiet confidence in the authenticity of my existence. This period of my life, a chapter that weaved together the threads of familial duty and personal identity, served as a profound affirmation of the journey I had undertaken. It was a reminder that the essence of who we are cannot be confined by the walls of expectation, that the true measure of our strength lies in our ability to embrace our truth, irrespective of the stage upon which we stand. As I emerged from this experience, the bonds with my family deepened, not in spite of my journey, but because of it. They witnessed, firsthand, the transformative power of authenticity and the unshakable resolve of an individual living their truth. This ultimate test, far from diminishing me, only served to solidify my identity, affirming the conviction with which I walked my path, a beacon of empathy and understanding in a world often clouded by judgment and doubt. As the narrative arc of my journey bent towards resolution, the experiences etched into the fabric of my being illuminated the path forward, not just for myself, but for the community I was now a part of. The visit to my sister's home, a crucible of familial expectations and personal truths, had solidified my identity, imbuing me with a resolve that shone brighter than ever before. Returning to college, I crossed the threshold not just as a student, but as a harbinger of change. The decision to register as a woman was not merely administrative, it was a declaration, a testament to the journey of self-discovery and acceptance I had navigated. This act, symbolic and profound, marked not an end, but a new beginning, a step into a future where the essence of my identity was no longer shrouded in uncertainty, but celebrated in its entirety. Embracing my identity fully, I became an advocate for diversity and self-expression, using the tapestry of my experiences as a foundation upon which to build bridges of understanding. The magical gift of empathy, which had once guided me through the murky waters of social interactions, now became a tool for transformation, a means to perceive the unvoiced struggles and aspirations of those around me. In the classrooms, the corridors, and the myriad spaces in between, I shared my story, not as a tale of adversity, but as a narrative of empowerment and transformation, each word, each shared experience wove a stronger fabric of community, a tapestry rich with the hues of diversity and acceptance. The magic that had been bestowed upon me, far from setting me apart, served as a beacon, attracting others who sought to understand and to be understood. This advocacy, born from the crucible of personal struggle, ignited conversations that transcended the boundaries of gender and identity. Workshops, seminars, and informal gatherings became the crucibles for change, spaces where the norms that had once confined us were re-examined and reshaped. Together, we explored the vast landscape of human identity, discovering that beneath the varied exteriors of expression lies a common heart, pulsing with the desire for acceptance and belonging. The college, once a stage for my personal test of identity, transformed into a forum for dialogue and discovery. My journey, which had begun as a solitary path, had gathered a community of voices, each sharing their own narrative of discovery and acceptance. The magical gift of empathy, which allowed me to connect with the hearts of others, now served a larger purpose, facilitating a deeper understanding that transcended the superficial barriers that often divide us. As I look back on the path I've traveled, from the tumultuous beginnings to the resolute steps into new beginnings, I see not just my own reflection, but the faces of those who walked with me, who shared in the journey of transformation. The resolution of my story is not a conclusion, but an invitation, a call to those who seek to live authentically, to embrace their identity with courage, and to forge a world where diversity is not just accepted, but celebrated. 
In this new chapter, my role transcends that of a protagonist. I become a guide, a mentor, and an ally, using my experiences and the gift of empathy to foster a community where every individual, irrespective of their journey, can find acceptance, understanding, and the freedom to express their truest selves. This resolution, this new beginning, is a testament to the enduring power of authenticity, the transformative magic of empathy, and the unbreakable bond of a community united in diversity and acceptance. As the chapters of my story draw to a gentle close, the landscape around me bears the indelible marks of transformation, a testament to the journey not just of an individual, but of a community awakened to the beauty of diversity and the strength of authenticity. My story, once a solitary narrative etched with the struggle of identity and acceptance, now resonates within the hearts and minds of those beyond the confines of my immediate world. The ripples of change, originating from the halls of my college, have extended their reach, touching the shores of distant communities and challenging the bedrock of societal norms. The conversations that began in whispered tones of curiosity and uncertainty have amplified into powerful dialogues, questioning and reshaping the traditional views of gender and identity. My journey, a personal odyssey of discovery and acceptance, has become a beacon for others navigating their own paths, a source of light in a world often shadowed by misunderstanding and fear. Colleges, schools, and institutions, once bastions of rigid conformity, now explore the vast spectrum of identity with a newfound openness, crafting policies and spaces that celebrate diversity rather than stifle it. Workshops, forums, and support networks burgeon, each a petal in the blooming flower of community understanding, fostering environments where individuals are encouraged to embrace their true selves, free from the constraints of outdated norms. But the impact of this transformation extends beyond the academic realm, infiltrating the very fabric of society. Families, neighborhoods, and workplaces, touched by the stories of individuals like myself, begin to view the tapestry of human identity with eyes unclouded by prejudice. The magical gift of empathy, once my solitary guide, has spread its wings, becoming a shared vision that allows people to perceive beyond the surface to understand the shared humanity that binds us all. Media outlets, social platforms, and public forums, once arenas for division, now serve as bridges connecting diverse narratives, showcasing stories of acceptance and transformation that challenge the world to reconsider its stance on identity and expression. Each story shared, each voice lifted, contributes to the shifting sands of societal perception, creating a world where the richness of diversity is recognized as the cornerstone of a vibrant and thriving community. As I stand at this crossroads, looking back on the journey that has unfolded, I am filled with a profound sense of gratitude and hope. Gratitude for the trials and triumphs that have shaped me, for the magical gift that has allowed me to connect with the essence of others, and for the community that has embraced the vision of a world unbound by binary constraints. Hope for the future that we are crafting together, a future where every individual has the freedom to express their identity with pride, where diversity is not just accepted, but celebrated as the essence of what it means to be human. The epilogue of my story is not an ending, but a promise. A promise of a world transformed by the courage to embrace our true selves, to challenge the norms that seek to define us, and to forge a path of understanding and acceptance. It is a world changed, not by the actions of a single individual, but by the collective hearts and minds of a community united in the belief that diversity is not a challenge to overcome, but a gift to be cherished. In this changed world, my story, our story continues, an everlasting narrative of growth, acceptance, and the enduring power of empathy.